Hi, I'm John from the Flutter team. In this video, we're going to see different ways to make your Flutter app faster and more reliable. The Flutter SDK gives you everything you need to build modern, fast, and great looking mobile apps. It's designed to run fast. But for the smoothest possible experience for your users, it helps to occasionally take your app into the shop for a tune up. That's why Flutter comes with a collection of developer tools that lets you see exactly what your app is doing while it's running so you can spot opportunities to make it faster or more reliable. And it's not just about performance. DevTools lets you look under the hood to fix other things, such as your app's layout, network requests, and more. In this section, we'll configure a new project in our IDE, run our app, and connect to DevTools. You can create a new Flutter project in Visual Studio Code using the command palette. Next, we'll set up our launch configuration file. I'll open the run debug view from the activity bar. Then create a launch.json file using the suggested link and select Dart and Flutter. By default, this configures three run modes, debug, profile, and release. Debug mode is designed to be used while you're making changes to your app. You can hot reload, attach a debugger, and use all of the DevTools features in this video. Profile mode lets you measure your app's performance and still use the performance and memory tools. Release mode optimizes your app for the real world, so you can see how it actually runs on a target device that you're using. DevTools only supports debug and profile mode, but not release mode. Now we're ready to run our app. Select debug as the run mode from the drop-down menu in the run and debug view. Once you've got a device connected and USB debugging enabled, select your device in the status bar. Physical devices offer more accurate timing information than emulators, so it's a good idea to collect performance profile data using real devices, not emulators. But you can still use DevTools with an emulator in debug mode if you prefer. Run the app using the Run button or press F5. Now we can open DevTools using the command palette. You can choose to open the full suite of tools in a web browser or open a specific panel in the IDE. If you prefer to use the command line, you can copy-paste this link into your web browser. Now let's take a tour. Welcome to DevTools. Hot Reload and Hot Restart are available in the toolbar. Hot Reload updates your app with any new code while preserving your app's state. Hot Restart restarts your Flutter app from the beginning without recompiling the native app. You can also Hot Reload your app using the Debug toolbar in Visual Studio Code, and the Flutter extension will perform a Hot Reload when you save a file. Flutter Inspector has tools for inspecting your app's widgets, how they're laid out on screen, and more. To select a widget, use the Select Widget Mode button. Once selected, you'll see it highlighted in the Widget Tree view. You can use this view to adjust your selection. You'll also notice that your IDE jumps to the creation location of a widget when you select one from the inspector. You can inspect and modify the layout of your app in the Layout Explorer. For example, Adjusting the main axis alignment of this column, Flutter updates your app right away so you can see the effect. You can also change the layout of the column's children. Flutter uses a flexible box layout algorithm for rows and columns called Flexbox. So if I assign these text widgets a flex value of 2 and 1, it will make the first widget take up twice as much vertical space as the second. You can also change whether the widget's fit property is tight or loose. If I set the fit of this text widget to loose, it'll be allowed to be smaller than the available space. You can also slow down all the animations in the app, show guidelines such as render boxes, alignments, scroll views, clipping, and more, show baselines for typography, highlight repaints, which paints a border around each layer and changes its color whenever the layer is painted, and highlight oversized images, which helps you find images that are bigger than they need to be to be displayed at full resolution. The performance view is the place to go to make sure your app is running at a smooth frame rate. In order to get accurate timing information, I'll stop and relaunch the app using profile mode. The frames chart shows you every frame your app is painting. You can quickly see when a frame is too slow to hit a smooth 60 frames per second. When a frame is slow, the rendering engine will skip frames in order to display the right content at the right time. DevTools colors them red so you can easily spot them and take a closer look. Once you've found a janky frame, 
DevTools automatically analyzes it for you in the Frame Analysis tab. You can see how much time the frame spent in the Build phase, Layout phase, and the Paint phase. Other notifications will appear at the top for other common performance issues. To see a complete picture of timing events for a particular frame, select the Timeline Events tab. Tracing information for the Build phase, Layout phase, and Painting phase can be shown through the Enhanced Tracing options. Flow analysis is also displayed using orange arrows. DevTools uses a trace viewer called Perfetto, so you can use the WASD keys to inspect the timeline events and press question mark to see more keyboard shortcuts. The CPU profiler collects CPU samples to help you get a sense of the functions your app is spending time in. To collect a profile, press record, use the app for a bit, and then press stop. You can also select Load All CPU Samples to load the profile of all available CPU information up to this point. The Bottom Up tab helps you identify expensive functions like this one here. The Total Time includes any functions that are called by this function, and the Self Time is only the time spent in that function. You can hover over a function to reveal tooltips for more context. The Call Tree tab helps you identify expensive code paths. The Call Tree tab is top-down. This is helpful if you want to get detailed information about where a function is spending the majority of its time. The Method table shows the call graph for individual functions. For example, this Fibonacci function is recursive, so it calls itself and is also a caller for itself, except for the original function that called it. The Flame chart is like the Call Tree tab, but more visual. In any of these views, we can find the same expensive function by filtering out core Dart and Flutter libraries. The memory view is helpful for diagnosing whether your app is using too much memory. Dart objects are stored in memory on the heap, which is managed by the Dart virtual machine. Objects are removed from the heap during garbage collection if they're unreachable. In other words, if there's no retaining path to the root object. The Profile Memory tab shows the number of instances of each object type and the space these objects are consuming in the heap. For example, this app is storing a lot of objects called My Object in memory. The Diff Snapshots tab can compare two different snapshots. You can also explore a single heap snapshot in this view without diffing it with another. The Retaining Path shows the references for the shortest path from the root object to the current object. If there's a retaining path, then the object will be retained and will stay in memory after the next garbage collection cycle. You can also inspect these objects in the console using the context menu. The Trace Instances tab lets you see how many allocations have occurred for the selected class. Search for the name of the class and select it to start tracking. Any allocations from this point forward will be tracked and can be explored in the panel on the right which shows the methods where instances of the selected class were allocated. There's also a memory chart that shows your app's memory usage over time, and a button to trigger garbage collection. The Debugger tab includes a full source-level debugger. You can set breakpoints, step through code, pause on exceptions, evaluate variables that are in scope, and other common debugging tasks. It can even show code coverage and the time spent in each function. The total time includes the time it takes to run methods called by our function, and the self time reports only the time spent in that function. You can also use Visual Studio Code's debugger if you prefer. The Network tab shows each network request made by your app. You can use this view to find out where your app is using too much network bandwidth. The Logging tab shows all the logs produced by your app. You can display your own log messages using print statements or the Dart developer library if you want to label it as a certain kind of log or include more information, such as a log level. The App Size tool lets you analyze a snapshot of your app so you can improve the size of your app. To start analyzing, build your app using the Analyze Size flag and select the JSON file to view it in the App Size tab. The boxes at the top are a tree map, which shows the size of each Dart package, library, or class. 
You can drill down into specific parts of your app to see what's taking up the most space. You can also compare two snapshots to see why your app size changed. Remember, Dart uses a tree shaking compiler. So the size only increases when you call new code. So adding a package to your pub spec won't increase your app size until you start using it. And that completes our tour. Now let's look at some slow flutter apps and use dev tools to diagnose and fix performance problems. Here's an app that runs an animation, but whenever I tap the floating action button, the animation stutters. The frame analysis tab shows that the build phase took longer than usual. Usually it's pretty fast. Let's open up the timeline events chart. By default, details about the build phase are hidden. This helps keep the timing information accurate but doesn't help us debug a slow build phase. To get more detailed timeline events during the build phase, select the Enhanced Tracing dropdown and choose Track Widget Builds. Now we can see which widgets are spending the most time in the build phase. If we look at the widget, we can see it's performing an expensive operation in its build method. Here's another example that displays a horizontal scroll view of cards. The height of the list is calculated based on the largest card. Opening the Performance tab and selecting the slow frames reveals a warning about intrinsic passes. Intrinsic height and intrinsic width widgets are slow because they need to lay out all of the widgets in the subtree to determine the size. To see exactly what's going on, enable track layouts and open the timeline events view. The layout phase is the longest with most of the time spent in the speculative layout pass that the intrinsic height widget performs. To fix it, we can use a constrained box to limit the height of the row of cards. This isn't exactly the same behavior as before, since it may not be large enough for the largest card, but it doesn't spend as much time calculating the layout. In this case, this is a trade-off between functionality and performance but there are often cases where intrinsic height or intrinsic width are useful and don't impact performance very much. That's why we're measuring it in DevTools. For more information about intrinsic layout calculations, check out the Decoding Flutter video on intrinsic widgets in the description. The Paint phase takes all the render objects for your app and groups their painting instructions into layers before sending them off to the raster thread. Rasterization is the last step of the rendering pipeline, where the painting instructions get executed. This happens on the raster thread. You can see how long each layer in your app took to rasterize by going to the raster stats tab in the performance view and taking a snapshot. This view will provide the most accurate data when you use it with Impeller, Flutter's latest rendering engine. You can use debug mode to quickly make changes and figure out what's making a particular layer expensive to rasterize. Sometimes an animation can cause a layer to be repainted more often than you intended. If it's expensive to paint and composite that layer, it's a good idea to move the animation to a separate layer to be painted separately. To see which layers are being repainted, use the Highlight Repaints tool. This draws a colorful border around each layer that changes color when the layer is repainted. For example, this app displays a circular progress indicator, which is composited into the same layer as a widget that's expensive to paint. The Highlight Repaints tool changes color on each frame while the animation is running. You can tell the framework to put the circular progress indicator on a separate layer by wrapping it with a repaint boundary. In Visual Studio Code, I can type command dot or control dot on Windows and select wrap with widget and type repaint boundary. That's better. Putting the animation on a separate layer saved our expensive widget from being rasterized while the animation's running. There are a lot more tactics you can use to make your app faster. Check out the performance best practices page for more information. As we've seen, DevTools is a great tool for improving your app's performance. So go ahead and take it for a test drive. To learn more about DevTools and all things Flutter, head to flutter.dev.